what started as a marketing ploy by the Discovery Channel is now a cultural phenomenon. More than 30 years later, Shark Week is bigger than ever. And here to talk all things sharks is the Florida Aquarium's resident shark guy, Eric Hovland. So welcome back to the show, Eric. Oh, How you wow, it's so good to be here. Good morning and happy yes. Shark Week. Happy yes. Shark Week, yes. Happy Shark Week to you as well. So, so let's talk about this, because people were definitely fascinated mm -hmm. with these creatures. Wonderful, it makes me feel good. Do you think they're misunderstood, sharks? Unquestionably. Sharks have been... Let's just look at kind of the history of sharks in media. They really kind of premiered as a movie monster. Okay. And that's... What we have to understand is it's a movie about a monster creature that kind of really doesn't exist in the wild. Mm. As somebody who's personally had the chance to splash in a dive cage at Guadalupe Island with incredible great white sharks, your first thought is like, what am I going to feel like when they come close? Right. And there was no time to be afraid. I was just so excited. Wow. And just, you know, giggling with excitement when an 18-foot great white shark just cruises oh, yeah. by and that eye looks at you and you're looking at her and Lucy, my first great white love, oh. um, cruised right by. And I still get giddy about it. It's been almost five years, but it's just that magnificence of that creature that that's not the creature you saw in the monster movies. There's no zombies out there, there's no vampires, there's no werewolves, mm. there's no monster shark either. Mm. So right, and now that you say people are fascinated, that tells me we're doing our job right. We're telling the stories of sharks and we're turning that fear into fascination. Yes, and you said that um, you know sharks play an important role in our ecosystem, right? In the oceans. Very yeah. much so. When I say Happy Shark Week, I mean happy sharks, and happy sharks mean happy oceans. Mm -hmm. The balance that we see between corals that we're protecting at the Florida Aquarium, spawning and reintroducing into the wilds, or rebuild our our reef systems here in Florida, they are balanced and counterbalanced by the predators at you know the outer banks of the food web. In that you have the larger sharks, the groupers, etc., mm -hmm. that help keep in balance balance the fish that might eat the other fish like tangs that would groom the reef and make space for those corals to grow. Mm -hmm. So you take one of those cogs out and the machine falls apart. Okay. Corals to sharks, it's all part of that big picture. Yeah. Is that, why are we seeing like coral bleaching, things like that? Does that play a role? Yeah. In that? No. Well, certainly there are changes happening in the world. You step outside today and it's hotter than it's ever been. And we yeah. hear that every year. So we are seeing changes to that environment. The waters are changing, they're warming, uh, pollutants, et cetera, and the number of factors Actors come into it that change the environment for the corals and the corals can't just get up and move right yeah. that's their home we do see shark populations that may change and move and follow the the food populations of like the smaller uh, bait fish or herring yeah. etc and they may move with the temperatures and the tides but the corals are there to stay yeah. so when you rock their world they may respond to it with a stress response by losing the algae if this was a coral here yeah. that green coloration is due to the algae it's in the cells of that of the mm -hmm. tissue of this little anemone like creature. Yeah. But when they lose that, they lose that ability to make their food from the sun. I see. Hopefully they can re-recruit that algae if we can turn things back around for them. And that's one of the things we're working really hard on at the Florida okay. Aquarium as well. Yeah. Oh. So you have a lot of sharks there at the aquarium. So if people are oh, fascinated yes. and they want to see them, they can go to the aquarium and see plenty. They can see them and they can see an opportunity to get into the water. In fact, with our bonded head sharks, one of the smallest species of hammerheads, it's okay to call them adorable, because okay. they are. <laughs> <laughs> when people often see them, they say, wow, baby hammerheads. It's like, well, you're half right. They're not babies. They are a type of hammerhead yeah. called bonnets. We have a new program called Sea Trek, and you might have heard about that. It gives people an opportunity to get into the water with our sharks. With wow. I love our hogfish. I mean, they are true hogs. <laughs> and our rescue turtle, uh, yeah. Sheldon, and, and all kinds of other creatures. But you don't have to be a scuba diver to do it. Okay. And that is one of the oh. best ways to get to know sharks, mm -hmm. is have the opportunity to either get up close, wet, and personal, or when you see other folks in the water yeah. that look like you, that maybe aren't scuba divers, but yeah. they have a chance to see sharks face to face, yeah. it changes the narrative. And you start to tell stories about how you love sharks. And I hear that more and more from the munchkins when yes. I talk to them. Right. Yeah. It just... Boom. Yeah. Well, good. Well, well, thank you so much. Good luck for, for Shark Week. Oh, I'm sure you'll have a lot of And visitors. not to disappoint, oh, I know okay. sometimes we want to focus on the teeth, so I did yeah. manage to, you know, yeah. kick around the house and find a tooth. <laughs> Look so, at that bad yes. boy. Wow, look at that. that Sharks are more insane. than teeth, oh, but if you're going to have a tooth, have that? a okay. Megalodon's right. tooth. Yes. Okay. This is when thank I dove to so 120 much. feet off of North Carolina yeah. to gather. And, and Good. And for more information, the website is on your screen there, <laughs> flaaquarium.com.